Well, this is Neil <laughs> Kilby and Peter Schmitz. Peter Schmitz. Peter right. Schmitz. Yes. Sir. Uh, this is the second of the series of uh, uh, the Transforming Profits, the download way of uh, discovering hidden profits and opportunities in your business. So yesterday we had a quick look at uh, the the first part of the process, which is to uh, see what it is that you're trying to achieve. So if, if we have a quick look at this is what we were looking at yesterday. And we start with the target and we go to the current. We'll start with the current and go to the target. And we look what we're trying to achieve for each of these elements during the year. So hopefully you've done that. If not, it's not difficult. Just write current, gap and target. You start with the current situation. So if the current situation for your revenue, your profit, and then how many hours you as the business owner is actually putting into the business. And, and one of the big pit things is that people just don't really add them up. They just say, that's what I'm doing. If you ask, if, you, if, if you've got a partner, ask the partner how many hours you're doing. And I bet you it's 20 hours more than you thought you were doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then put it in the, the target area, what revenue would, you would like, what profit, you, net profit you would like for the year after that. And what target hours you're hoping for so that you've actually got what what we all got into business for which was money lifestyle and freedom that's really what we got in there for and if you don't have any time so it's it's a great idea to increase your revenue by 50 percent. but if you increase the time that you're spending by 50 percent, you're not actually winning you're actually getting closer to uh, an early grave, which is the last thing that we want. So that was what we looked at yesterday. This is just an example. And so we were looking for an increase in revenue of 500K, an increase in net profit of 300K, and a reduction in the amount of hours that we're doing on a weekly basis by 30 hours. So that's a quick review of yesterday and what is basically the starting point for this program. So... Peter, if you would like to start walking people through the next process. Yes, the, ne the next piece of the, of the process is, is, is a pretty in-depth in dialogue with the business owner about his current process. And then the second part of this is the clutter that's in the way. But if you bring up, this is the, the current process. Uh, so when you, let's take a look at your monthly... I'm getting an echo again, uh, monthly averages. So, so I want I want my business owner that's on the phone to give me the, the 12, Neil, this is, I got a bad echo. I can't, I can't hear it. Okay. Um, I do not know why it's coming through. Can you pause the video or no? Nope, can't be live, my friend. All right. So, so the, the month, let's, let's take a look at the first column on the left, which is your monthly averages. How much revenue have you done every month? And I want to, and, I, and in, 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 if I was doing this with a real business owner versus a presentation, it would be a dialogue. And we'd be looking for some of the best things you've done and some of the worst things you've done. So, so, so maybe March was your best month ever. And so I want to know what happened. You know, how many new customers did you get? What did you do to get those customers? What did it cost you to get those customers? All the metrics that drove that business. What I'm looking for is, is things you've done in the past that have worked as well as things you've done in the past that have not worked. I, I give you an example. Somebody might have done a radio ad and they and they got, you know, two leads from spending five thousand dollars on a radio ad. Okay, so obviously you would stop doing that. However, oftentimes we find business owners have done something successful and they've forgot they did it. So they've moved on. And so we're gonna dig into all those metrics and look month by month for what's going on. And, and it's just a conversation to understand what you've done, what the, what the metrics are, what it costs for a customer, what it costs for a lead, how long they stay, all these kind of things. And surprisingly, a lot of business owners may not have the answers at, at the time of the call. They might have to go back and do a little you know, homework to find it. Go look in your QuickBooks or some of your Google Analytics, things like that, to find out what's really going on. But at this stage, we're looking at the, the monthly revenue, yeah. how many customers that is. Okay, so if we're doing 1.5 million, uh, 1, 1, uh, 1 million a year, we can call that, say, 900,000, or I think it's 875 or something, 900,000 a month, roughly, and they would need approximately 
uh, sorry, know, 90, 000, not 90, yeah, your math is off. Yeah, I said, only out by a factor of 10. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, and, and they may need it, depends totally on what your, your system is, but you may need uh, somewhere. Uh, well, it, it totally depends on what your average sale is, but let, yeah. let's have a look at that and say, um, for what can you think of a business? What, what, what that would be for? Peter, just it's your example. So, what would well, you say? Well, you know, a sixty dollar value. You know, customer an order is for sixty dollars. You're going to have you know a hundred hundred customers a day will get you close to that ninety thousand dollars a month, maybe okay. even more. I I don't want to get bogged down on the math, um, Neil. No, but we we still need to get some figures. Okay, so so, so let's just say Neil's an MBA. He loves numbers. Yeah. So it's 150, 1500 We've got an average value of sixty dollars, hundred fifty dollars, and to get those fifteen hundred customers. We're going to need how many leads? Is Probably, you know, 6,000 leads because you're, it depends on your closing ratio. And these yeah, are all, ab absolutely. All, but that's all, what we're looking at in the first place. Okay. All right. Right. And, so, and, so now, and so now the question is in the second column is, you know, where do they come from? Exactly. You know, you know, it, there's business owners do different things. You know, there's Facebook ads, there's Google ads. They could be doing radio. They could be on YouTube ads. We're going to look at all the different sources of advertising to bring in that traffic. Which ones are profitable, which ones are not, which ones bring in good customers, which ones don't. That You might get a lot of leads for a very good good cost per lead, but they don't convert. So those are all the metrics that we're going to take a hard look at because our job as we go through this discovery process to figure out what's working and what's not. And, and just in, in general terms, business owners get too busy to really take the time to dissect their business. And that's why this discovery process is so valuable. And so now we're gonna look at, you know, you got there the current sales process, you know, what are you doing today? And and, and what's and how's it working? So a lot of a lot of business owners will, will run a website and they'll drive their traffic to the home page on the website. Because that's what they were taught, that's what they thought they needed to do. And in today's world, that may or may not be the most effective, cost-effective way to do it. And so we're going to look at some other alternatives for that and see what you're doing or not doing. The point of this exercise is, is not to tell you what to do different. It's just to understand what you're doing currently so we can get a good good picture of your business. You want to go yeah. to the next slide? No, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, so so uh, a, a lot of online businesses if their current sales process is is really really obvious yeah. uh, and we we can uh, you you could talk to them about it and they can tell you the metrics a lot of bricks and mortar companies it's not so obvious you know they yeah, they, very they, true. They, they can get um, uh, revenue uh, people coming into a, a a building just because they're a shopping mall etc so uh, and what we're looking at now, so what Peter was talking about there was, this is where your money comes from. These are the process that have, have evolved over time, okay? And we tend to not change because they somehow sort of worked. I've, I've seen people spend money on TV ad, uh, uh, programs because they worked 30 years ago, and they've not never stopped doing them. You know, they've just, with magazines, yeah, magazines don't yeah, work like people just uh, People are afraid that that somehow magically has, has uh, is still working when they've got no evidence to produce it so the old clear thing that people used to do there was to give, give you some sort of uh, uh coupon or whatever you you know use this number when you call or use this coupon when you come in and that way you could trace it but a lot of people just don't don't bother to trace and they believe genuinely that everything works okay and they've got no proof of it so that, that's that's a so that was just a quick point I wanted to make there, Peter. So if you okay. want to get on to the yes. clutter, this is the, the clutter. Stuff really it's get always, it's it's always a, a fun conversation because it's exactly what it says. You know what's what's getting in the way, and and it's surprising what business owners bring up. You know the roadblocks the, 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 that are in the way, and it can be any number of things. It can be employees. It can be, uh, you know, your location. It could be a, something, you know, outside your business that's causing problems. It could be road construction outside your business. You know, there's just any number of roadblocks that are causing, uh, affecting your business. I mean, I, I give you an example. I had I had one 